welcome to Mercenita and we'll come together and show that select baby, right? What is normality? Normal is relative. And as we continue with our topic of cerebral palsy or parenting a child with cerebral palsy, today we're looking at the professional aspect, the medical and the psychological aspect of this condition. show that celebrate life. We're continuing on our topic of parenting a child with cerebral palsy, but today we'll know more about cerebral palsy. Good evening, ladies. Hi, Masingita. How are you? Very, very good, thank you. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Liz, we were talking last week about uh, cerebral palsy. I'm sure most people would like to know what is cerebral palsy. Mm. Mm. I think that's a very good way to start because basically cerebral palsy is a neurological condition um, due to insults to the brain causing brain damage. Now there are various causes of cerebral palsy. This so cerebral palsy, the, the insults can happen during pregnancy, at birth or even after birth. And cerebral palsy, basically there's a spectrum of manifestations. Yeah. yeah. So you can have a patient or a, a person with cerebral palsy who will never ever be able to talk, walk, or even um, be independent um, versus the patient that will be able to be high functioning in society. And I know they vary, they've got different names. Mm -hmm. I've never understood <laughs> that part. <laughs> then, uh, which one do you <laughs> Okay, which one? What? Why do we have to yeah. have names? The, yeah. you know, the labels. Got, uh, that's the thing. Mm. That's the thing. So I've known they vary, they the moderate, and they've got different names. Can you just take us? That. Okay, basically, the reason why they name these different types of cerebral palsy, it's got to do with the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. For example, the underlying cause will give rise to the severity. Okay. And if you look at, for example, a baby that was deprived, the brain was deprived from oxygen for a, for a long time during birth, uh, that, that child will have can have, for example, what's it called, all four limbs will be, uh, will be affected as well as the brain. So you have what we call the motor system being involved, causing paralysis, where you have either increased tone or a floppy child, and the mental aspect as well being affected. Um, Ms. Fossi, mm. uh, cerebral palsy, and you have a personal, you know, cerebral palsy personal. Mm. Especially in our African culture, mm. it's one of the misunderstood mm. conditions. Yeah. That the, how does one come to deal with it? Mm. Particularly, I'm thinking we were talking to a mother. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ms. Ingita, I think one of the most ambitious and optimistic things that human beings do is to procreate. In other words, when human beings think about having children, it is a dream. It is based on a fantasy, on an ideal, because it doesn't matter how many times we see conditions that deviate from the standard or the norm. None of us think it's gonna happen to us. We always, mm. it's always something that's out there. And so, you know, in every generation, all people who become parents, have this brilliant picture of this child that they're going to have. So it's the most optimistic undertaking that human beings ever get into. And so 
when it the dream is not fulfilled it is one of the most traumatic experiences yes. that a human being can yes. go through yes. because it literally means the house implodes from the roof you know and it shakes the very foundation of a person and it means building up from scratch and understanding of what's going on and i think for children who are first born mm. like me mm. i'm the first born it can be more traumatic because you ask yourself questions uh -huh. that uh -huh. is there something wrong yes. with me even yes. medical is there something wrong yeah. with me yeah. mm. Should I have, what if I have another the child? The next one becomes oh, the same. Mm. How do parents, can you answer me from both aspects, medical mm. and psychological? Mm. How do parents deal with that? Is it really about the genes and how do you deal with that? Maybe let's start with yes, the medical yeah, sure. side. Yeah. So basically, if, if you look at what causes the cerebral palsy you have to remember that let's let's start from the beginning that developing brain after six weeks when after conception the brain is developing pretty much anything can go wrong at that stage mm. and oftentimes the parent or the mother won't have control mm. over what what's because for example if there's a developmental delay or the brain is not developing how it should develop we you and i we have no control True. and but then there are other things that we can control for example if you smoke if you consume alcohol if you are exposed to other toxins in envir yes. environmental conditions that you should not be that can actually be that is one of the preventative um uh, ways of 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 or, or it can protect you from your, or it can reduce your increase of, of your risk of having a child with cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. What happens during birth, we have control, but we also not always have control. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even after birth, for example, if that child, for whatever reason, have uh, meningitis, where you have inflammation of the covering of the brain, cerebral palsy can be a result of that infection. Mm -hmm. And how do you, just quickly, how do you... Yeah, you know, I think looking at the many things that can go wrong in a pregnancy, it's mm -hmm. a wonder why we still do it. There mm -hmm. is so much out of our hands mm -hmm. that can happen, that can go wrong, and nothing can be done about mm -hmm. it. But I think, again, it comes back to the two aspects, Masingita, in, in the sense that it's about that optimism. Mm -hmm. You know, that, okay, I've kind of had my share. Mm -hmm. you know and and hopefully i've paid my price or yeah. paid for my sins or whatever understanding we develop out of that and then you think okay next time will be better yeah. mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. it's that keeping hope alive that next yeah. time it won't happen again this was just a fluke and so on mm -hmm. and that's what keeps us going back to mm -hmm. having the next child even after that you know but again it throws you into an anxiety psychologically oh, it throws you into an anxiety we will discuss that when we come back okay Let's keep the hope and take the break. We'll see you when we come back. Very quickly, yeah, we're still celebrating life here on Masinita with confidence. We're talking about cerebral palsy, even for young children. You were still talking about anxiety that comes mm. with yeah. the condition and parent, mm. being a parent and even a person who has mm -hmm. cerebral palsy. Yeah. So, you know, it, especially once you've had the experience mm. of a child with a condition, a disability, mm. and especially mm. in this case with cerebral palsy, I, I think people would think quite a lot they would be more a lot more anxious than before it's not so the process would not be as flowery mm -hmm. and as dreamy as it was before because by now they know that mm -hmm. things can and do go wrong yeah. and they have gone wrong with them so mm -hmm. the chances are and we know that once something like that has happened it means you have a higher likelihood perhaps of things going wrong so it puts you in a in a condition of uncertainty as a parent 
and it's kind of a process where you're keeping your fingers crossed mm. and of course with all of us when things don't go according to the normal expectation it's natural to turn within and mm. say you know there must be something i've done mm. you know and to ask why 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 and why me mm. and the question is always but we see it in other people why do you think it shouldn't happen to you yeah. but we all think mm. it should be happening it out there and not to ourselves mm. because we protect mm. ourselves and want the best I think it's even more of a shocker because cerebral palsy oftentimes times it's not realized at birth. Mm. It's only later when the child mm. is unable to walk, the well, child with is they slower than the peers. Uh, they picked it up when my mom says I was around two. But mm. they knew something happened at birth because when I was born somebody forgot the oxygen tank. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the 1991, mm. and I was a great baby. So they knew something happened. They didn't know the impact mm. until when I was mm. supposed to develop. Then they mm. realized mm. that you know, the case mm. is mm. except, mm. of course, certain. The awareness. I was very aware of what's going mm. on, but mm. the the awareness. But people think we are crazy because we are brain damaged. Are we crazy? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there are very normal people out there who are crazy. Mm. But what I can say is that the insult to the brain is static. I like, it's I like the word <laughs> insult. I've never heard it put the quite that way before. <laughs> so yeah. that brain damage is there. There's no way to reverse yeah, yeah. it's static mm -hmm. it's it's a done deal it's done yes mm. and we have to deal with the medical pr profession it's a, it's basically it's a it's a multidisciplinary approach there's yes. no way that a doctor alone can mm. take care of yes. a of a child or an adult with cerebral palsy mm. you need yes. the physiotherapist you need the occupational therapist mm. the speech therapist yes. the social aspect mm. and even more so we have to take care of the caregiver because yes. in as much mm. as we focus on the child mm. or the adult with cerebral palsy, mm. the caregiver mm. should be taken care of mm. as well. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, from because it doesn't show up so early like other conditions, yeah. this is where when we come back to the social cultural aspect, uh -huh. Obuti, this is where, you know, there's that expression that in nature abhors a vacuum. Yes. When people don't know, yes. people don't, it's difficult to sit there in the I don't know, yes. Yes. you know, space. Yes. Yes. So what we don't know, we will fill it up with what we think. Especially, mm. let, let's be honest, in our bill, black culture, oh, yeah. which <coughs> will come. Yeah. And, and you know, a critical part of that when I'm asking it is the fact, is the fact that we don't have medicine. We don't study the body. Yes. So all our explanation, our worldview is based on a social yes. type of engagement, the supernatural, mm. anything that has happened between you and I, because yes. we don't study anatomy. Uh -huh. It's not part of our science. Mm -hmm. So we can't give this type of explanation. It comes from a different world. Yes. Our world does not include yes. this. So that's why it then becomes an, an open ground for interpretation. Yes. Yes. Everybody comes up with what they think happened here. Yes. You know, and unfortunately, invariably in most cases, our science, African science, is based <laughs> on somebody having done ill <laughs> will to you. I know, I know. Uh, coming to the medical part, um, a lot, one of the myths about cerebral palsy and even just disability is that you are sick, which has a fought with so many people. I was offended at one time. Somebody asked me, what type of medicine are you taking? I was so upset. Mm. What can you say about that? Unfortunately, that is just the reality. Mm. We need to demystify the condition. And I'm very happy that we're having cerebral palsy. We're discussing there's awareness. Yeah. Because people need to understand that brain damage, it doesn't render a person, that person is not sick. Yeah. That person is not sick. That person has got a disability, there's impairment, but that person is not sick per se. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. 
what the cerebral palsy person can have that is different to the person with a normal brain is that there are certain complications, for example, mm. seizures, fits. Of course, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that we have to deal with. Mm. And, mm. And, and, uh, and we deal with it like any mm. other person without but, but seizures are not palsy. limited to cerebral palsy. Exactly. A person can yeah. have epilepsy and in and the and absence yeah, of yeah, cerebral yeah. palsy. Yes. And also not all cerebral yes. palsy will manifest will with seizures. seizures yeah. because like me, yes, passing which irritates me at some time, <laughs> at times, but I don't have seizures, mm. Mm. you know. Yeah, and even that can be managed. Increased yes. tone, those spasms, mm. it can mm. be managed. We've yes. got drugs on the market, it can yes. be managed. Yes, mm. actually when we come back, I want us to talk about the management. Mm. Sure. Mm. Let's take a break. You will come and finalize when you come back. Welcome back. We're still celebrating life, talking about cerebral palsy and how we can deal with it individually. But as a society, how important if is lifestyle to, to a person, whether a child or an adult with cerebral palsy? Mm. I think you know if we if we refer back to um, is it Zindi? Yes. For example, um, I think one of the most critical thing is caring for the caregiver. Yes. Because it's a traumatic experience, mm. and people need the assistance mm -hmm. many a times to sit and process this. And I'm not saying that as a psychologist, I'm saying that psychotherapy is the only way that they yes, can do I that, you. you know. You. Um, but often people will want some sort of expertise in dealing mm -hmm. with it simply mm -hmm. because many a times people will be surrounded by interpretations that are not based on anything yes. except some mm -hmm. whim and myth and so on. So people are looking and and will benefit from a conversation mm -hmm. you know an objective person who has some understanding although my understanding as a clinical psychologist is totally different from hers i i don't and you have a the personal side. experience yes and yes. in families absolutely yes, yes. yeah Where there's a person with cerebral palsy yeah what lifestyle does a person with cerebral palsy need to have to be able to 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 manage so what we try and do with cerebral palsy children or adults is we want to keep them independent for as long as possible i love that mm. the independence part mm. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's important for you yeah. <laughs> that's important for me so in everything we do that should be the number one goal yes all right then we would go to okay so what is this underlying what is the underlying cause what 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 happened why did the why did you end up with a cerebral palsy mm. and then firstly you would treat the underlying cause if it can be treated oftentimes yes. it cannot be yes, treated it's course. irreversible of course. but then you have to involve the other disciplines because if you just think that if the baby or if an adult is unable to walk, he will need assistive devices. Yeah. He will need the physiotherapist yes. to work on the strength of the muscle. Yes. He will need the speech therapist to assist with, because we want to communicate. Yes, yes. So mm. it's really, it's a multidisciplinary approach. Mm. Mm. And yet then coming back to community in yes. the sense, Yaguchi, we, we don't know those things. Mm, occupational yeah. people are often are wondering i'm sure sitting and wondering occupational therapy physiotherapy yeah. speech and hearing therapy yeah, know. you know what are all I these know. things yeah if i can talk from a personal experience from yes. a family member who mm. is who yes. you know we were born she already had cerebral palsy she's 63 years of yes. age and yes. and i think that whole thing of thinking people with a condition or a disability will die soon and yes. so on uh -huh. we she's 63 and yes. We grew up, she was already there, and we, she's just part of the family package. Yes, yes. We do know that there are things, she walks in her own way, 
Yeah. She eats in her own way, so we know that, you know, she's got to have her food in a specific place way. because yeah. she can't eat like us, have a bowl and so yes, on. Yes, and her yes, tea, yes. it can't be too hot and yeah. it's, it's got to be manageable and mm. those sorts of things. Mm. But that's just her. Yes. And yes. we just accept it. And we do whatever we need to do. And, and get on with that, it. I mean, there's certain things that I do in a person, especially a person who doesn't know me, mm. would ask, why do you do that that mm. way? And, okay, me being me, yes. I feel You have like to I, find your way. I, 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 I just feel like I don't owe you an explanation. Uh, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm just doing mm. it my own mm. way, you know. And we come off, and I wanted to bring that, we come off as being stubborn. Mm. Mm. Are we really stubborn? Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a combination of, on the one hand, people have the expectation, Yoguti, it's a disability. Yes. So you kind of, kind of need to be helpless. Yeah. And they've got to yes. think for you and do everything uh, for yes, you. Yes. So, mm. and, and then it becomes a vicious circle in that you, on the other hand, see that. Yeah. And it irritates you, and you need to prove that I can do this. I mean, you you told me your story <laughs> as a child of picking up your own books and so on. Exactly. You know, just to prove that I can I do can. this. Yes, you yes. know. So yes. so it becomes that kind of uh, a circle cycle of 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 interacting with one another and also talking. There are times when we don't understand what she's saying, our yeah. family member, yeah. and we ask, mm. and you kind of have to think through what she's saying sometimes. Which is very important for me. I would rather have you ask me mm. what I said than you pretend that you've heard me. Mm. Then mm. Uh, it annoys mm. me. The other aspect which is more about me. I, I grew up with, because of the stigma attached to the medical aspect and cerebral part, I grew up having issues with doctors and therapists. My mother would tell you that I ended up not going to a mm. therapist. Like, why must mm. I go? And you develop a defiant attitude mm. towards those disciplines. How can parents deal with, I'm grown now, <laughs> but how can parents deal with that way? It's like, you can let a child know that it's not that you are sick, mm. but you really do need this type of therapy. It's really all about education. I think the important thing is that we as society, we need to recognize that here we're dealing with a neurological condition, very well described, and we want, this the best, we, we want to do the best for this condition that we currently can. And it's important because it, you have to emphasize that independence. And I think society must allow people with cerebral palsy to just be. Because mm -hmm. I think we are too, we, yes, want, to, yes, we want to take yes, over the function yes. of this and that. We, we need to let them be. Mm. It was a doctor who told me I can't I And then I went and got my license. Mm. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for coming and just discussing this important issue. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You are not defined by your condition or your circumstances. You are defined but by who you are and who you want to be. Good night and may God bless you.